If you're in the market for an adventure gravel bike and you're on a budget, then you need to be looking at this, the Mongoose Grit, which at the point I'm making this video is on reduced pricing at Walmart, a deal so good even wildlife can't resist a look. An adventure bike is going to need tires capable of working on a variety of surfaces. Be the roads paved, dirt, or gravel, these tires should get it done. Kickback Tires by Kenda. These small knobbies designed for all the previously mentioned conditions and the size of these tires, 700 by 40 c The Grits Rims, Double Wall Alloy. This is a purpose-built gravel bike frame. It's lightweight and it has a beautiful glossy metallic teal finish. A frame so good it somehow makes a hunchback design work and it's a 6061 alloy frame and that adds to that lightweight. The overall bike weight, 30 pounds. Not to mention the gravel friendly features. Mounts for front and rear racks and fenders and six accessory mount points as well as internal cable routing. Gravel bike usually means drop bars as this one has which is not typically in my comfort zone but I'm staying open minded. These do look to be up to the task with their 31.8 millimeter diameter and their soft foam grips wrapping and hiding the cables. They have textured rubber lever hoods for the dual lever shifters. Up and down shifting right at the fingertips with brakes contouring the shifter line. And this is all micro shift, 7 speed micro shift on the right, on the left, 7 speed double. We'll see why when we get down to the drivetrain. The bars themselves are alloy as is the stem and the seat post, which can be adjusted for height and tilt via the quick release or, well, this tilt adjustment here. And there's this seat which is an attractive seat. It has white trim and also some black on black graphics and this plastic area back here that reminds me a lot of my seat on Project Comp V2. A bike has three main contact points, bars, the seat, and these pedals, which are basic mongoose plastic pedals. They're mounted to Pro Wheel alloy crank arms. And behind that, the two chain rings that make up the double on that double seven speed. These chain rings are 32 and a 48 tooth, and they're shifted via a derailleur that I assume is a micro shift. At the very least, it works with a micro shift because the back derailleur is a micro shift 26C mounted to a replaceable derailleur hanger. The 7 speed freewheel, not a mega range, this is a mega drive from Sunrace 14 to 34 tooth. And you may have noticed both the front and the rear wheels on the grit quick release. These mechanical disc brakes, at the very least, look fancy with their mirrored radius branding. Bottom bracket, a standard square taper, and this kickstand, this may actually come in handy on an adventure bike. Earlier I mentioned this frame being loaded with mounts, from the rack mounts to the fender mounts, and I think I said six accessory mounts on the frame. It's actually four accessory mounts on the frame and two on the fork. At the very least, I am impressed with the visual quality and this design. It is a sleek looking bike. Ride time though, that's the true reveal, especially with gravel riding, which is what this bike is built for. At least that's the marketing, so let's see how it does on gravel. It's interesting how you need the right tires and how they need to be thinner to ride on gravel. You would think a wider tire would do best, but it's actually something thinner like these 700 by 40 cs that actually cut through the gravel. While at the same time riding on top of it, it's a delicate balance, and these kickbacks, they pull it off. The fork is steel, which apparently helps with the micro vibrations that tend to happen on gravel. I'm not rattled to pieces. What happens when the gravel ends and the roads turn to dirt? Well, the grit keeps on rolling with the same confident grip and I will admit more comfortable than I would have guessed for a bike with drop bars, which you know, I typically don't like. I should also mention I've been on this exact same road with gravel bikes that cost hundreds more than the grit and this is doing equally well. Good so far, but what about actual roads, paved streets? Because gravel riders can spend hours on the saddle on paved streets trying to get to the back country. Coming from a guy that normally rides mountain bikes, I forget just how many miles you can rapidly add up on anything that has road bike heritage. Which shines through here because the grit handles like a road bike when it needs to, including all the benefits of the multiple drop bar positions. So I'll admit drop bars earn their keep in specific situations. Now as far as shifting with these drop bars and these micro shift shifters, found the right shifter has an exceptionally long throw. Curiously, that's only on the right shifter, the left shifter about half the throw distance. And that's when shifting down. Now shifting up on both shifters, nice quick crisp shifts. Throw aside both out of the box, it didn't adjust anything, shift fine through all of the gears. Fitment, there are no toe to tire issues on the grid and I'm five foot 10 inches tall and you can see 
I fit on this bike perfectly as is with plenty of adjustment both up and down if I needed to change leg extension. I'm comfortable enough on this bike even with its drop bars that I started to venture across fields where the paths disappear and give way to targets on trees. But I'm a vintage movie buff so I know to leave before the banjos start playing. Let me be frank with you for a moment because sometimes budget cycling means reduced expectations. With the grit, I found it to be capable and adaptable. Example, it has so many mount points that I struggle to find stuff to put on them all. I did find a perfect spot for that Blackburn toolkit because it goes well here. Many gravel riders carry about four water bottles. I could find one, so I had to use other water bottles. And I ran out of those before I ran out of accessory points, so I dug deep. How about the Blackburn bike pump? Though I wouldn't recommend putting this bike pump by your front tire. And on the other side, Mr. Curls. He must like the grit because he never complained. I'm going to admit that I still prefer standard bars, years of conditioning, but I think those that are into drop bars are going to be very pleased with the grit. It has, in my opinion, a build and a set of features that go way beyond its budget price. So let me do something I don't do often. I'm going to grade this like a teacher. Gonna give it a B plus for the shifters, because they perform well, but that long throw, which keeps them from getting an A. Bar, stem, seat, fitment combo, and comfort, an A minus. Minus, because that seat, even though it looks good on long, long journeys, or even not so long journeys, think you're gonna get about 12 miles out of it before you need a break. Kenda kickback tires, those get an A plus for their performance at the budget price of this bike. And I'll be talking about price in just a moment. And to the low score on this report card, the radius brakes, which get a C, meaning they work well enough to get by, but the rear brake isn't engaging fully on the rotor, so I'm going to have to adjust that. And because that involves more than the standard loosening and tightening the bolt adjustments, I give it a C. Pedals, I'm not even going to count because almost everyone changes the pedals. Expensive bikes don't even come with them. Pro Wheel Crank Set, a straight even A for the entire group set with its 32 to 48 tooth range. At the rear, a B plus. The 26C, that's acceptable. Now here for the gearing, a cassette would have been nice in place of this free wheel, but at least this is a Mega Drive with Mega Range 14 to 34 tooth, which works well with the front gear. It can go decently fast and acceptably slow. Frame, most definitely an A+. The lightweight alloy, it weighs the entire bike. 30 pounds, barely 30 pounds. It has internal cable routing, and I'm not kidding, local bike shop caliber finish and design. You know, make that A++++, because of all those mounts, I can bring along Mr. Curls, which earns the grit a strong A overall, and makes this bike a great value at its regular price of $4.98. And sometimes that price is even lower, like it is right now. At the time of me making this video, I'll put that price in the title. I'll also put a link down in the description, and remember, using the links from this channel helps out the channel without costing you anything extra. And I also want to hear from you, what do you think about the grit, especially at its current price? Comment with that below, give this video a thumbs up if you found it informative. I hope you subscribe if you haven't already, make sure you have that notification bell active, and thank you for watching Kev Central. Have a great day.